This podcast is sponsored by Steve Gephardt and Moneyline Lending. When it comes to selling or buying a home, the ultimate real estate experience starts with Steve. Go to stevesellseverything.com. And when you need a mortgage to buy or refinance a home, the ultimate borrowing experience starts with Steve. Go to moneylinemortgages.com. We've said it before, we'll say it again, college is just not for everyone. No, it's not. And technically speaking, students have options. And And this this is Chick to Chick. Chick. So this is the time of year for high school seniors when, you know, they've applied for college and those college acceptance letters start pouring in, right? And And they're nervous and anxious. If they're going to get in, do they even want to go? All the things. Right. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Do I go to mom and dad's alma mater? Do I pick something else? And maybe, just maybe, they're even thinking to themselves, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't want to go to college. And You know, maybe they did it because mom and dad told them they need to go to college or society tells them they need to go to college. And we've said this before and we will say it again. College is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You don't need to go to college to have the career of your dreams. You can get a career doing something else. And we've said this before and we will say it again. And this is so important. Only 60% of kids who start college actually graduate. Should we repeat that again? Say it again. Yeah, there's only the 60%. 60% actually graduate from college. That means the other 40% who went spent all that money. For what? All that time. Mm -hmm. When technically speaking, Mm -hmm. kids you do have options. They really do. And that's something that Flora and I think that parents need to also hear because we feel compelled to tell our kids that look at colleges, look at colleges. And I think kids get afraid to say to the parent, but I don't know if I want to go to college. And the perception can be negative and it should not be. So that's why today we have Rob Baer with us. He is with the Pennsylvania State Building and Construction Trades Council. And I'm hoping you're going to provide us with a a lot of great insight to help parents feel better about the options that their kids had. So thank you, have. So thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're very welcome. So Rob, what do you do at your council? That was a whole mouthful there that Carrie went over your title. What do you guys do? Well, at the state level, uh, we represent 130 different construction trades unions across Pennsylvania. Uh, I took over about eight months ago when my predecessor retired, but I'm a product of an apprenticeship program. I started my apprenticeship in 1987 with the International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, uh, 36 years this year as a journeyman wireman, and uh, was a business manager of my local union for almost 14 years until I took this job. So I tell kids, look, maybe college isn't for you, but the apprenticeship program You do earn while you learn. If you get accepted into a building trades apprenticeship program, they're gonna place you with an employer. You're gonna work through the week. You're gonna get paid. You're gonna have health care. You're gonna start paying into your retirement plans, which are multiple. You're going to go to school usually at night, two nights a week, or sometimes some of our bigger programs, the kids go one day every other week at a training center. And you're going to finish up in four or five years and be a journeyman electrician, a journeyman pipe fitter, a journeyman sheet metal worker. But you're not going to have any debt because the programs pay for everything complete. There's no cost to the apprentice. And if there is, some of the programs, the kids pay for their books. That's it. The program I came from pays 100 percent. The instructors, the books, everything. You accumulate zero debt for your apprenticeship program. And when you're done, you not only have a lifelong skill, you have a lifelong career. And keep in mind, many of our journeymen across the United States as a whole, journeymen in the skilled building trades, 30 to $40 an hour plus retirement, healthcare, and none of that comes off their check. That's your benefit package. 
So you can make a very, very good middle class living. You can have a nice home. You can have a decent car. You can feed your children, put clothes on your kids back, and you can provide health care the second to none. Most of our building trades programs, 100% health care programs. Medical, dental, eye care, and prescription. You know, and they take care of you cradle to grave from the time you get in until you're gone and your wife's gone. You know, so you get a chance to embark into a career that not only is it very rewarding, you're graduating with no debt. You can ply your trade anywhere in the United States. And you're going to make a, a really good living and you're going to be able to take care of your family while you're doing it. Do you think that schools are doing better when it comes to introducing these opportunities to kids? Or are you still finding that you're over here going, hey, we can offer something to you? How's it going these days? It's it's going better. And the reason I say that, the unions that we represent have made a concerted effort to hire full-time training directors. We send our training directors out to the school districts, not even to talk to principals and guidance counselors, but like myself and Mike Ford, the secretary treasurer here, We've met with school district administrators, sat them down and said, look, you're doing a disservice to your kids. There's a lot of kids that don't go to college and believe it or not, we have a ton of kids that have taken the college preparatory programs through high school that end up coming to the building trades because you need advanced math, advanced sciences, English, English lit helps, reading comprehension to be able to pass our aptitude test. So we'll sit with the homeschool and say, look, this is what you need to do just to prepare. It's maybe not as hard as an SAT, but it's not easy. But if you make it here and you steer these young men and women to us and we get them into these programs, they're going to get an education for free and they're going to get a career and they're going to get paid while they're learning. You know, a lot of our first year apprentices in even in central Pennsylvania, start out at $15, 16 $17 an hour to start as a first year apprentice. You know, by the time they're a third year apprentice, 24, 25, you know, plus healthcare. You know, we have a lot of apprentices coming. We get a lot of kids that you're 40% that didn't make it through college. They end up on our doorsteps too. And when they realize what we offer, the standard is I, I don't know why I wasted three years at a university. And some of them are married, some of them have children, they've never had health care. We build highways, we build nuclear powerhouses. I myself, I can tell you right now, if somebody would have told me in 1987 when I started, I'd have been standing in a reactor building a three mile island, putting fuel rod bundles in a reactor, I'd have said, you're nuts. Well, I can tell you I did it. You know, I've had a wonderful career. I've built things all over this country. And it gives you not just a sense of satisfaction, but a sense of pride in knowing that you're helping build the infrastructure for this country of ours. You talked about going into the high schools, but I also still think that there might be a, a misconception or a misperception on the parents' part. I can tell you from my perspective, if my son said to me, Mom, I don't want to go to college, I want to do something else, I would have supported him. He did want to go to college, so I supported him in that respect. But how do you change the messaging and actually get the message across to parents so they understand this isn't just a job, it's a career? One of the things when we do the career days at the schools, we have flyers made up that lay out the benefits of being in the building and construction trades. Most of the time, when that young man or woman takes that home, when I was a business manager, I could pretty much say after a career day, I knew I was gonna get 10, 15, 20 phone calls from parents saying, you know, my kid bought this flyer home. Uh, is this for real? And I'd be like, yeah, it's for real. And they're like, so you're telling me my kid's going to be getting a defined benefit pension plan and a defined contribution annuity plan? I'd be like, yes. And you're telling me my child's going to get 100% health care with no co-pays and no deductibles? And I'm like, yes. And this kid's going to go to school for free? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, well, where was this when I was a kid? And I was like, <laughs> it was there. You just didn't know about it. Yeah. And and keep in mind, too, I sat on the Pennsylvania State Apprentice Council. Governor Wolf appointed me to that in 2021. And one of the things that the state is doing is we're looking at also doing apprenticeship programs outside of the conventional construction model. Because when you talk about needing workers, 
All right. One of the things I'll date myself when, when I was in school, we had a lot of kids that went to Votech for machining, you know, well, that kind of died out of the years. But now all of a sudden we have a resurgence in manufacturing. We're building all the reactor coolant pumps for Westinghouse right outside of Pittsburgh at Curtis Wright. Well, it takes a lot of time to teach a young man or woman to be a qualified machinist. So we're seeing a lot of interest in those type of apprenticeship programs. Again, we call them the non-conventionals. Uh, the state labor and industry has done a very good job of working with the model that we've had for years to bring this into other industries, tool and die makers. Um, we, we do a lot. We, we've done a ton now last year in healthcare that are actually apprenticeship programs in the healthcare industry. Maybe they're not your typical four year, maybe they're two, but when those young men or women complete it, they get certifications that they can literally go anywhere in the country as a phlebotomist or whatever it may be. And it's an earn while you learn model. So instead of just taking a kid and sending them to medical school as a medical assistant, we're putting them in a setting where they're working every day, they're getting paid. They have a curriculum they have to do just like the building trades guys do. And we get those programs accredited. And one of the things that we've pushed is like with our building trades programs, ours, many of ours are accredited through major universities too. Like a kid finishes up the IBEW program, he's earned, I think around 42 college credits, okay? So if he wants to go finish his associates, he can. He can take those credits transfer and he can go get a bachelor's degree. So, and that's all paid for. He's got that in the apprenticeship program. So instead of spending all that money, you know, and uh, I, as a business manager, I had a couple guys when the world fell apart in eight and nine. We got them retraining dollars. I sent a couple of my guys back to Penn State. They got their degrees in electrical engineering. Well, the smartest engineer is the guy that's actually for the last 15 years built things first. Yep. <laughs> you know, can't beat that. Absolutely. You know, when he looks at the book and he says it's wrong, why do you know it's wrong? Well, I, I built it. Do it. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know so, how to do it. Hey, Rob, yeah. very quickly as we wrap this up, if people want more information, where can they go? Okay, you can go to the State Building Trades website, PA State Building Trades. We have a link to all our affiliates on there of all the different trades. They all have websites. They can feel free to reach out, usually through the websites. It'll give them the training directors of each and every apprenticeship program. They can contact the Labor and Industry Department of uh, Workforce Development. They can speak to anybody on Director Lowe's staff that deals with apprenticeship to guide them in the right directions also, okay? And... If you're not really even that sure, uh, they can reach out. They can Google my number here at State Building Trades. If somebody calls and said, I live in Pittsburgh and I want to be an electrician, I can tell them which local to get a hold of. If they want to be a boilermaker, whatever, we can help guide them in the right direction and get them in contact with the appropriate apprenticeship program. Fantastic. Rob, thank you so much. Wealth of information. We appreciate you being with us today. Thank you for having me. Boy, he just set up a whole win, 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 win situation. And then some. You know, I just I want to say this for parents and any young people that have tuned in because their parents made them listen to it. After you graduate from high school, nobody cares what you're doing. No. The hype is right before you graduate when everybody's talking about where are you going to school, what are you doing. After that, it really doesn't matter. Nope. And when you come around to your fifth year high school reunion and you're making more money than your buddy that just graduated from high school or graduated from or college. graduated from college with thirty thousand dollars in student loan debt and you don't have it hmm, who's the winner there yeah so i mean it's just something to think about and i think this is such great information today. it really was technically speaking kids you have plenty of options out there and it's okay if you don't want to go to college auntie flora said so it's okay. <laughs> we appreciate you being with us today. We hope that you will check us out on YouTube. Like and subscribe until we are back to chirp about another topic.